hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is alice if you're new here thank you very much for stopping by do not also forget to subscribe at least if you've learned one or two things from this channel so far please do not forget to click the subscribe button thank you very much i will really really appreciate it and also share these videos with your friend if you learn one or two things from these videos thank you very much and so today in today's video i'll actually be talking about i picked some questions from my comment section about medical laboratory science and in today's video i'll actually be answering it please in case you're actually hearing noise of chickens actually around please just do bear with me i've been trying to make this video since and the noise is not stopping so i just have to make the video irrespective so please um, if you're interested please do keep watching thank you very much now the very first question i'll be answering is um if you've not watched my video and my pre internship story that was how i said there was difficulty in finding internship placement this question says since there is an increase in the number of reference lab should that also increase the chances of finding internship placement the problem with why reference labs cannot actually be used as internship as source of internship placements or as a place of internship placements is because for your internship now your internship is like a period where you're just fresh out of school there's the understand that you have the skills to be a medical laboratory science but this is actually a year where you put those skills to practice and now they expect you to practice all what you've learned basically all what you've learned not all what you've learned while in school and so if you go to a reference lab reference labs only specialize in a particular area they do not work on everything hospitals and other places work on everything but they are called reference labs because they specialize in a particular area of medical laboratory science and then they work on it so if you do your internship in a reference lab you actually not be able to learn other specialties or learn other area unlike if you actually do your internship in an hospital that does all areas that's why you see places where you can do internship are places where they have at least almost all the specialty basically where they operate all the specialties those are always the places that actually approved for internship that's one of the reasons why private labs are not approved because they are not so broad basically and then they want you to have this being your first year out of school fresh out of school they want you to have the a practical knowledge of basically all the specialty not just where you specialize but a practical knowledge as, in, as a medical laboratory scientist you should be able to practice in every area even if it is actually not your specialty so so an increase in reference lab in nigeria does not actually mean an increase in internship placements yes it can it can actually mean an increase in job placement but not for internship placement so i hope i've answered that question now number two question is would you recommend someone to do internship at uch ibadan do you have any information about the facilities there and how the lab is i think uch ibadan is a very beautiful place to actually do your internship i have friends that have done their internship there i have senior colleagues who did their internship there in fact i at one point wanted to do my internship there we wrote the exam but we're not called <laughs> basically they're almost like because they're a teaching hospital they have a lot of samples they run and they have a lot of reference samples i don't know if i can explain them they you get to learn a lot from them because it's like a teaching hospital cases maybe you will naturally not see in your local hospitals you will see it there and it's like and it's like more exposure basically the chibano is a wonderful place and i think their facilities are also great so i will actually recommend if you get them my dear stay there <laughs> what are you looking for again stay there and then the next question is actually do they pay during internship yes they pay during internship and you know the funny thing is that the payment during internship is like before you start getting paid it's like mind-blowing you're already preparing your mind like because it's first fresh out of school and you're getting a hundred and something thousand and you're like i will use this money for this i'll use this money for that yes it's actually a big money and it's like it's good in the sense that it's like you have a starting platform you can save actually most people a lot of people use their internship money you know to save to start up because after internship you're going to nyc which which um, nyc pay is actually a lot lower than your internship so yes they actually pay during internship and normally you the internship pay is always around hundred thousand and above it can vary from 110 to 115 to 105 to 130 to one something that's for government hospitals basically so if you're in a government hospital the internship pay should be around 100 and above so yes they actually pay you during internship and something like some people will say 
now someone also asked how much do mls get in internship i think i've also that the two questions are actually linked to so i've already mentioned that in what in answering the previous question now the next question is application for internship for foreign students in nigeria so for foreign students who actually want to apply for internship here in nigeria i think it's still the same old process and it's very not very easy but for people for foreign students who actually don't study mls in nigeria the first thing if you want to apply for internship here in nigeria you have to get a license from our bo governing body because your license the license gotten from another country will actually not be visible here yeah? but then so you have to apply for a license um from the amsin body and then i know the i think for foreign bodies i'm not i'm not sure exactly but I think you have to do a three or four month posting in some us in, in an hospital of your choice, wherever you think you want to do, or a school of your choice. Basically, you have to do a few months for them to actually familiarize you with Nigerian procedure. You know, Nigerian what we do in Nigeria basically, MLS is the same thing everywhere, but the what what we face in different countries actually different maybe like now if you studied in india or you studied in um, the us things like malaria parasites and all those things which we naturally face here which are endemic here you will not actually you don't face it over there in those countries so they would like to actually introduce you to some things that are actually not the same things that will actually make a little difference in nigeria so i think you have to use a three four months to actually learn some things i think six months depending i'm not sure about the exact number of months you have to learn then you have to be inducted into the council here of nigeria that is medical laboratory science council of nigeria you'll be inducted then you get a license so once you get a license from the governing body i think you're free to do your normal application so you apply like every other person so i think the only difference is that for foreign students you have to be inducted into the amsium body of nigeria that the council so without getting inducted into the council you cannot apply for internship in nigeria yes so that is it that is i hope i've answered that question our second to the last question this person asks do we take practical exams after the internship so before internship after the internship do we take practical exams not really no except maybe a facility or wherever you are deciding to do your internship decide to actually take practical exams but i've not really heard of any yet the ones i'm familiar with you are to do a seminar presentation in every specialty you've actually passed through because for your internship you will not just stay in one specialty like i said earlier you're going to rotate you're going to go all around every specialty so each after each posting you do you're actually going to do a seminar presentation maybe presenting about something relating to that specialty or what you've learned in that specialty basically so you do a seminar presentation after every posting and that is what they will use in signing your logbook which you will eventually submit to the council at the end of your internship year so we actually do not do a practical examination after internship what we just do is seminar presentation but before internship you might do examination that's to get the internship and interview in some places and some places they just speak some places do both exam and interview if you're interested in what the whole process of um, internship application you can watch i've done a video on how to apply on inter internship application i'll put it in a link somewhere in this video so you can also watch it and you know know more about the internet the very the very last question i'm actually going to be answering in this video is challenges i faced as an undergraduate <laughs> challenges i faced as an undergraduate in medical laboratory science challenge could be maybe the cost the cost load that's why i said the only challenge i could think was the cost load could be bulky but i think that's not only mls other courses to all other um, course actually have bulky workload or bulky <laughs> Or bulky cost load so I think it wasn't really a challenge so I think challenge is subjective to a lot of things um, the school you're studying in and all that so challenge could also be in practical aspects and maybe if I think about it now challenge maybe we couldn't practicalize enough we didn't see as yes maybe a lot of what we thought was basically theoretical like maybe when you're talking about parasites or things that you really were it will really have helped us to you know see it and actually do the practical but some cases 
um, you don't maybe get to see practical as more often you see routine routine works so most of the practicals you see are actually routine works you actually don't see practicals on a lot of things or maybe in the area of micro not all parasites you actually don't come through you don't come across you don't see everything you are learning basically i think for micro basically because we learn about a lot of parasites we learn a lot of microbes but when it comes to practical it's not that easy seeing them it's not that easy assessing them because i remember in uh, for parasitology my parasitology lecturer she will go to where they sell cows and you know try to get cow dogs like i think she literally used to buy it cow dogs in order for us to see parasites you know understand see parasites and all this kind of thing we will take ours we will have to cover our nose because the smell is usually killing trying to use formalin and trying to see at the end of the day when we are checking under the microscope we just before we even see sometimes before we even see one parasite or one over it's quite difficult and then you keep seeing the same kind of over we don't see other things we learn like basically all those kind of things are challenges and okay i can say term them challenges also for the fact that when it comes to um, project yes challenges yes that's true when it comes to project you can be quite limited especially when it comes to having to get samples from people most of the time you have to do projects that it's actually sample collection will actually not be difficult so i think sample collection can be difficult when it comes to some certain things and also times even if you want to get samples you can't really tell people okay i'm doing this i want to get your sample for a project or that has to do with these people are like people are not so open to that so that can be a challenge in itself if you can find a way to work around it and basically so challenge like i said is really subjective to your environment you can be in an environment your school can be in an environment where people they are actually open to some certain things while someone in another school will actually be not be facing that at every level you will actually find challenges that are peculiar to yourself and so challenges are not really for me it was just maybe a case of gp a case of not seeing practical enough and I think my lecturers tried to do the very best and it's just like the environment doesn't give us enough practical to actually blend with what we have here i think theory is like 70 percent practical is like 30 percent there are a lot of things you learn you might never see I, I have sometimes my lecturers are teaching me something they're like they were only opportunity to see this parasite maybe once throughout yeah maybe 10 years working experience so you have things like that and so basically challenges are subjective depending on how you view it and how you see this so thank you very much if you have, if you have more questions about medical laboratory science i'll be very elated to actually answer your questions and please still don't mind the chicken and please i'll actually don't know, forget to actually subscribe like share you know encourage let's let me know you are actually getting I would really love to know if you're actually getting one or two things. You're learning one or two things from these videos. And it's really be a blessing to bless you. Yeah, thank you very much for watching so far. Do not forget to subscribe once more. Please do subscribe. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful day. Bye.